When I when I assumed office um, in January, prior to that, I had been visiting a number of uh, organizations, nonprofits, board members, just to get an idea of um, what my job would entail. And I and I just got the sense talking to some um, companies and or corporations that we weren't completely all speaking from the same sheet of music. And you'll hear me say that a lot. So when I when I assumed office, um, I worked uh, worked the board here, as you know, in my very spe first special call work session, to get approval for this advisory committee. And my thought process was it was to help complement what the county manager was doing as the county rep. As the county rep, obviously he had control over all the staff members, and he was our direct liaison with the Braves. But outside that scope, for some reason people didn't feel comfortable or didn't know that he could come to him with asking some questions. So driven by the fact that we had about 100 days before the Braves would open up, I wanted to make sure that we were all, all the people that would be affected by SunTrust and Battery Parks were part of the discussion. And then the, so hence the, the advisory committee. And there was a couple things that I wanted to emphasize. First of all, that Mr. Hankerson was still our county rep. This advisory committee would have no directive authority. They would be working through through the stakeholders that were outside Mr. Hankerson's uh, work, uh, uh, working team. But Mr. But Commissioner Out was to work with Commissioner Hankerson and help him get to April 14th so that we would have a successful opening. And I had a lot of questions from the commissioners as to why we had county employees on Commissioner Ott's advisory board. And, uh, and I say this with all respect, but humor, um, there isn't much that goes on in this county that County Manager Hankerson doesn't know about. So my thought process was that those members that were on this advisory committee, when they came out of the meeting, they would immediately contact uh, uh, Mr. Hankerson, who was their boss, and write to them what was going on in the event that we had some meetings that he wasn't able to attend. So we have these two corporate bodies working in, in, uh, in concert for the sole purpose of a successful opening on April 14th and in the future. One of the loose ends that I, I, I inherited when I was, uh, entered the office was the $14 million that was an original commitment by the county that we agreed to um, fund infrastructure that would support this development. And somewhere along the line the last three years, uh, we had not had the opportunity yet to come to closure on that, but we were all working towards a common goal already. So I was a little confused by all this, and I was, I was limited by the fact that I couldn't get all the commissioners together in a room at the same time because I had to meet the Open, Record, Open Meeting Act that any time I have three of us together, I have to call a public meeting. So I find decided that the easiest way to do this was to achieve, uh, and to achieve two objectives was to inform the senators, I'm mean, the commissioners, of what it is that the Braves have already done, working in concert with the county, and most importantly, to inform the public of where your tax dollars, how your tax dollars are being spent. Because I know there's still a lot of questions, and I get them by my emails, uh, texts. They're not quite sure what we're doing uh, on this huge enterprise. And that's, that's to be expected because we're a government. We provide, co we provide public services. That's what we're really good at. And we do it better than anybody. This is an incredible county that so many people take for granted. You go in there, you get in line, you get a piece of paper, and all, it's all taken care of. That's, that's how good this county staff is. But we're not a business. We're not trained, we're not experienced, we're not oriented to running a business, and yet we're part of a major business enterprise. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure that all of us understand, and I mean the board here and the public, gets the understanding that we are all working together to make sure that your tax dollars are being spent in an open and transparent manner. So I asked the Braves to come here today as part of this effort to talk about what, they ha what they're doing uh, to achieve this common goal of having a successful opening on April 14th, but also 
uh, so they can bring a world championship team to our county. And we can also be on television every day. So with that, uh, I welcome the, uh, the representatives to give their presentation. And I want to thank you for coming today uh, and taking your time out of your schedule to inform us as to where you are. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman and uh, uh, Board of Commissioners. My name is Steve Space. I am with Jones Lang LaSalle. I'm a senior project manager and a civil engineer. And we're happy to be able to present where we are progress-wise on the, on the infrastructure projects. And I'm Emmy Montagna, civil engineer with Kimley Horn, and I represent the Braves. Um, Steve and I are very excited to be invited here today for what we consider a really positive report on those projects that are funded by a combination of both the $14 million contributed by the county and the, four, the $10 million contribution by the Cumberland CID. Both these contributions are established in the Memorandum of Understanding, and then they are further formalized in the development agreement. These projects include public infrastructure critical to the ballpark operation. And in addition to just utilities, these projects focus on safety and improved ingress and egress for pedestrians, vehicles, and public transportation. This project list was established by the Braves Construction Com Committee Company in very close collaboration with county staff between December 2014 and July of 2015. These projects have been designed by the Braves consultants, and they have been reviewed, approved, and permitted through the appropriate county departments. The construction of these projects are being managed by the Braves Construction Company. But before we start Steve's detailed review and update of the projects, we just want to show you two aerial photographs. The first one you see up there was taken in January of 2014 and shows a 57-acre undeveloped site. The next photograph shows the impressive progress made over the last three years, and it's not without commitment and collaboration and teamwork that has made this progress possible. And you mentioned that, Mr. Chairman, um, your staff is, and your and your county is one of the, the best counties to work with from a development standpoint in my career, my 30 years in, in site development work. Um, what we want to do is we're going to walk through, um, I put an overall site map that shows uh, kind of the 57 acres that Amy's talking about, some of the satellite parking and off-site, um, and we're going to walk through each of the, the progress on where we are in each one of these projects. Um, what we call the bus connector road is basically, uh, I wish I had a pointer but it's basically, you see it, it's a connector from Cobb, uh, from Circle 75 that winds around the parking deck on the east side of the stadium and then comes back down and connects to uh, Windy Ridge Parkway. That basically provides access to parking. Uh, it's a handicapped bus drop-off uh, area, and it pro also provides pedestrian access both from the elevated walkway and the sidewalks that are surrounding the site. Uh, where we are status-wise on that, as you can kind of see in the picture, is the final topping is started on that roadway. Um, the final striping is expected to be completed by the end of February. Uh, the next item on the list was what we called a truck staging lane. Basically, um, if you look at the upper picture, uh, you can see the back entrance, the main entrance for deliveries, um, where the player entrance is. Um, that's basically used for game day deliveries. And so on a game day, they have multiple trucks that are delivering at different times of the day. So what we did is we added what we call this truck staging lane. It's basically an area so that they can the trucks don't impede traffic uh, and cause hazards on the roadway. Um, that work is completed as you can see. You can see people parking in it right now. Um, that would be similar to what would be on a game day, except for you'd have big trucks. The only thing that's left to do on that is the final striping, um, and we anticipate that that work is also going to be done by the end of February. Um, the next item on the list is what we are calling, it's a, basically a walkway. Uh, you can see a plan view and then you see that what's labeled D on there, uh, where our elevated walkway that uh, allows pedestrians to cross over Circle 75 and Windy Ridge Parkway. We are um, 
providing a 10 to 12 foot wide sidewalk. There's some site constraints that uh, are dictating what the size of that is that basically allows pedestrian access up to uh, our satellite parking. And it'll also provide access to some of the neighborhoods, the apartment communities that are up there, will allow, allow them to come down. That has been permitted. Uh, we have an LVP in hand and that work has not started yet, um, but we're anticipating getting that started in the very near future. Uh, the elevated walkway is basically it's our uh, means of getting people safely across those two the busy intersection of Windy Ridge, uh, yeah, Windy Ridge Parkway and Circle 75. Um, and that's and again, as Amy said, that's one of our one of our main goals is to move sa pedestrians safely to the development and away from the development before and after. Uh, that's a design build contract. It is. Um, Currently, as you can see, it's fairly fairly far away, uh, far, far, fairly far along. Sorry about that. I should use better words, but um, we anticipate that all the ramps, um, the handicap ADA ramps that are going down, and all the stairways will be completed uh, by the end of February, and the elevated structures themselves would be uh, probably late February, early March uh, when you see those. That whole project is going to, you know, scheduled to be done by the end of end of March. Um, on the list also was traffic signals. Um, don't really need to talk about those too much. There's an additional entrance on Cobb Parkway that's going to be provided. That's a key access point for pedestrian traffic from par satellite parking that will be on the north side of Cobb Parkway. Uh, I'm sorry, on the east side, west side. Uh, and then the, at the intersection, you see the second uh, smaller arrow at Heritage Court and Windy Ridge Parkway. That will help on everyday traffic um, as far as facilitating traffic movement, uh, and it'll also provide pedestrian crossings at on all four corners of that intersection. Uh, then I can get the button to work here. Uh, Heritage Court, um, as you probably know, this originally was a dead end street. It only provided access to one property. Um, we've extended that street all the way through, so it's a through connector uh, that connects uh, Windy Ridge Parkway and Circle 75. It's also uh, part of the, the uh, circulator bus. We'll go across the multi-use bridge and down through that, and there'll be a bus stop uh, on both sides of the road on the northern part of that. Uh, you can see in the picture that the paving on that is nearly complete. Uh, on the northern section, the southern section, uh, we have base coat down and on both of those we'll have final striping and paving and all the sidewalks will be in by March 31st. Um, then the next one is Main Street. Uh, that's basically the section of road. It's it's We called it Main Street at one time. We changed it to AAA Street and now it's called Battery Avenue since we, we know the name of the development. Uh, it's basically an extension of the roadway from Cobb Parkway up to Heritage Court. It continues on and connects to the bus connector road we talked about, but the public portion of it is right there on that uh, main stretch uh, next to the apartment buildings you see. Uh, all the utilities are in. The curb is in, the base is in, and like the other uh, paving projects, that will be complete by March 31st. Uh, the other thing that we are uh, working to accomplish on that by March 31st, the sidewalks on both sides of the road, and then the extension of the sidewalk along the frontage of Cobb Parkway and tie it to where the uh, pedestrian crossing at the signal. Um, the other uh, item that we have included in this is all the public utilities, the water, the sewer, uh, the storm, stormwater management system for the project, um, those have all been, uh, basically we've, we've incorporated all that, that's been completed, um, and it's been completed for some time, and I think um, we're, we're working on ASBELTs to get final certifications on those in the very near future. Um, So where we are today, the total, uh, we talked about this being a combined of the, the 10 and the 14. Uh, based on our current estimates, uh, we have about $6.7 million of cost in roads, $7.9 million in utilities that we talked about before. The traffic signals uh, have not started, but they're estimated to be in the, the just sub 700 range. Uh, the public sidewalk going up uh, and tying to the satellite parking was 480,000. Uh, public utilities um, is 4.7 million, uh, and then the elevated walk uh, is 5.7 million. So our costs to date are slightly over that, um, and the Braves obviously absorbed the difference between the 24 million and the additional costs that we've incurred to date. 
think Emma, you were So in conclusion, Steve has stated um, projects need to be completed by first pitch, and he's thrown out uh, the date of March 31st. That's actually the exhibition game with the Yankees, and we hope to be as substantially as complete as we can. And as you can see, there's been tremendous progress made. We're all very pleased. We thank you for inviting us here today to give you this update. We hope that it's been informative, and we appreciate this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, I just want to make sure the question, commission had any comments here. Um, which one of these buildings is made out of EFIS? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just have kidding. A, multiple just... buildings will have that on. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to say. It. I just had to say. It. I, I really want to thank you for coming today. Um, on this, on this picture here, what, is, is the Omni Hotel? I mean, the uh, the Comcast building part of one of those buildings? Yes. Yeah. I was just curious because I knew it was one of the original construction items. Yeah, that's, that's right it. there. Oh, the one. Okay. All right. I just yeah. just curious. Comcast and Omni are both yeah. in that picture. Okay. Um, well, thank you for coming today. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, illuminate all of us uh, where we're going on these uh, on these programs. Thank, thank you. you for the opportunity. And the next tab we have